Python is an awesome language to work with. It's powerful, and it has lots of features you need to get your work done. One of the ways that Python is powerful in the application is through Python toolboxes. Now, sometimes you have toolboxes that either for confidentiality reasons or because maybe as part of a certification process, you don't want to share the source code to prying eyes. We've introduced encrypted Python toolboxes to solve this problem. All you need to do is open the toolbox, select Encrypt, enter a password, and optionally create an unencrypted backup copy of the file. Now our toolbox is stored in a secure way. We can ship it off to a client and not worry about revealing any of the internal source code. Now, we continually add tools to ArcGIS. We added over 250 tools to the Pro 2.1 release alone. But you, know, you can use those tools directly. You can use them with Model Builder. Whenever you want to dig deeper, for that, you need Python. One of the ways we've made working with Python and tools even better is we've added the ability to take any tool and directly send it to the Python window. When we do this, it's going to open up the Python window for us. It's going to initialize all of our parameters. And from here, we can make any changes to this code or maybe even copy and paste this into a script. So now that we're at the command line, let's look at some code. When we're working with data, it's often the case that we need to explore what attributes and properties it supports. Now, we've had ArcPy described for a long time to allow us to do this. But new in Pro 2.1, Pro we've introduced the ability to, add, uh, to, to use arcpy.dadescribe to look at all the attributes supported by an object all at once. This will return a Python dictionary that contains all the attributes. So let's go ahead and look at that. Look, we get back everything that's supported. All the nested information is all there. We didn't have to look through any documentation or switch back and forth between multiple pages of properties. Cool. All right, so we've looked at some ways that we can work faster with Python. But what about when we're working with other people's code or even code from our previous selves? How, what can we do there? We, just, we have code, and we just want to run it. Well, I've been working on a project in the Delaware Bay to under, understand the impact of shipping noise. Now, I have some colleagues who are helping me on this project. One of them recently gave me a toolbox and told me it works great on my machine. Famous last words. OK, so let's open it and try running it here. It starts looking OK. It fails. We're missing an import. But now, with ArcGIS, this isn't a problem. Powered by Anaconda, we can use the Python Backstage to manage and install thousands of packages. So let's go ahead and find the missing import, install it, and we can get on our way. Now, we can also use this Python Backstage for managing multiple environments if we have conflicting dependencies. We can also, this is going to install and configure them, make sure they work exactly the way we want in our environment. OK, so now this package is installed. Let's go back and try running this code again. It worked. Simple. All right, so we've looked at how we can use the backstage for handling dependencies, but what about debugging? Debugging is really a critical part of working with code. Now, we can add print statements, we can add log files to kind of piecemeal get back tidbits of information. But a rich debugging experience really makes our lives much easier. Now, with Visual Studio 2017, you can interactively debug your Python script tools with Pro. Let's see what this looks like. I'm going to go to Visual Studio and attach to my Pro process. OK, now that I'm attached, I'm going to go back to Pro and try opening a tool that I've been working on. Now, I know that there's something, there's some bug in this tool, and I know that it, it, it's not working exactly the way I want it to. Let's see how Visual Studio can help us handle this bug. So let's just go ahead and try opening it and run it. Now, it starts out just fine. Everything's looking OK. But then, boom, we hit, we hit an exception, right? And now we get dropped directly into Visual Studio, initialized exactly at the line of our failure. We can explore all of the variable state. We can look at the call stack. We're really in a great place to figure out exactly what's going on in this code. Now, if you haven't caught it, this time it's pretty easy. It's I before E, except for all the times it isn't. All right, so let's save that change, press continue. And initially, it's still going to fail in Pro because Pro is using a cache copy. But if we run this tool again, we're going to see that this time it's successful. Cool, a much better debugging experience. All right, so I've, showed, I've shown you how you can deal with missing modules, how you can handle debugging your script tools. But what about tool validation? 
This has been a challenging area because you can't actually see what's happening in the middle of your code execution. Well, Visual Studio can help us with this as well. Let's go. I've, I've saved out my validation code to an external Python file so that Visual Studio can see it. Let's switch over to it, add a breakpoint in the middle of my update parameters section of the validation code, and now see what happens. So we're going to go back to Pro. We're going to open the tool. And as soon as we open the tool, it immediately fires that breakpoint. Now we're initialized right in the middle of the validation code where we can make any necessary changes. This is a much easier solution than what we've had in the past. All right. That's all I have for today for debugging. But we're also going to be adding support for additional IDEs and debuggers in future releases. Thank you.